our session is about new sins that we added to the professional services category recently. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how to navigate the mass program uh, for your procurement needs. So as Carla said, my name is Christiane Montague. I'm a procurement analyst for the professional services category. And I have been working in the MASS program for the past 18 years. And my colleague, Bill Neese, is a procurement um, pro management expert. And he works with me on managing the SINs for the professional services category of MASS. Um, we're also going to, let's see, here's a welcome slide. Um, this webinar is for our customers. It's designed to answer your questions about professional services acquisitions and to try to help you find solutions for your requirements. Uh, you will earn one CLP for sticking around for this whole presentation. And um, the, the heart of this presentation is talking about the new SINs that we really recently added to the professional services category. I'll dive into those a little bit. And then again, we will talk about resources available to you in ordering off mass. If you need to submit a question, as Carla said, go ahead and use the Q&A function in Zoom to do that. And if you have questions after our presentation, go ahead and email us at professionalservices at gsa.gov and we will be happy to respond to all of your questions. So, talking about MAS, a multiple word schedule is one of the most unique vehicles in the contracting universe in the federal government. Um, it is managed by the General Services Administration. Our solicitation number is in this top bullet. It's quite long. Um, we're putting that there for you in case you ever want to go into SAM to look it up. But I have a link to our solicitation right in SAM in this presentation. You can just click on that link and it'll take you right to the solicitation. Under the MAS program, uh, going back a, a, a little bit uh, of a history lesson, GSA used to have numerous uh, schedules for a variety of commercial products and services. Um, as of 2019, we had 24 different schedules. Um, one of the schedules that GSA for the professional services category managed was the prof professional services schedule. In 2019, GSA consolidated all of those 24 schedules into just one schedule called the multiple award schedule now. So um, that schedule is enormous. It covers over 300 unique uh, NAICS SIN offerings um, for all types of commercial products and services. Um, we have, because the offerings are so broad, we created categories under MASS um, for the broad offerings. There are 12 large categories under MASS, and these do align with the federal government's catalog management initiative. Um, and under each large category, there are what we call subcategories uh, that break down uh, the offerings into more uh, distinguishable uh, segments. And then within each subcategory, there is at least one and often more than one special item number or SIN. So under the professional services category of MASS, that's one of the 12 categories we have, we have almost 50 SINs under that category alone. Um, and those SINs are owned and managed basically by the professional services category, uh, professor, professional services and human capital category of GSA. The category guide on GSA e library shows all of those 12 categories. And I'll show you a screenshot of that in a couple of minutes. Um, the e library allows you to do searches or just to follow along the links with the category guide. Um, so you can drill down to the types of products or services you are looking to purchase. One of the things about MAS is it's commercial products and services only. So we do not have non-commercial products or services um, available under MAS. Uh, however, there are so many commercial products and services that we cover uh, a, just a huge array of offerings under MAS. Today, we're just going to focus on a, a few of our professional services SINs, and those are ones that we just recently added to the schedule um, or updated a SIN description to expand the offering. Here is a 
a screenshot if you were to go to sam.gov to look at our solicitation and the link is actually at the bottom of this page here um this is what you'll see is a a, a section of sam that shows all of the documents associated with the solicitation it's got the solicitation itself um, this document called ibr attachment contains all of the clauses that are incorporated by reference into the solicitation and then we have the 12 large categories those attachments we also have this document called the mass available offerings document and that is an excel spreadsheet that has all of those 300 and so sins available under mass um, there's a lot of detail in that sheet it shows the sin number the NAICS associated with it uh, the sin title the sin description the category and subcategory and so forth. So that is a really good document um, it, to look at if you are trying to get your arms around what is available under Mass. I highly recommend looking at that document in the solicitation if you go there. Now, one of the nice things about these category attachments is they are all structured exactly the same. So whether you clicked on the professional services category attachment, which is what we're talking about today, um, or let's say the travel category attachment, that, that the structure of these documents is exactly the same. And the way they start out is when you open the document, you will see instructions for all, all of the, the sins covered under the entire category and any clauses that are applicable to the entire category. Um, then it will dive down into each of the subcategories available under the large category and any specific instructions associated with those subcategories will show. Then uh, it will dive into the actual individual sins. It'll show the sin titles, information about the sins, any sin specific clauses or any sin specific instructions that would be useful for vendors or users to know about the sin. Um, so one of the things we recommend if you're going to, if you're curious and you want to look at this document, um, you know, start at the top, read the overall category instructions first, then go down to the subcategory that's of interest to you, and then finally dive into the sin specific um, information that you're looking for. One of the things um, about uh, MAS is that it is open continuously. It never closes. So we get offers every day. We get new offers in from vendors. We're continuously adding new vendors to the MAS program. Um, when we make a change to our solicitation um, outside of MAS, you know it as a solicitation amendment. In the world of MAS, we call our amendments refreshes. So where you see a reference to something that, that is called a refresh, that is merely an amendment to the solicitation. Um, because our solicitation never ends, we have to routinely amend it or, or refresh it to keep current with provisions, clause changes, and then changes to our overall offerings. So these, uh, so just wanted to, to share this information with you if you've never looked at the MAS solicitation. It's not required that you do so to use MAS, but um, since we're all in contracting, if you want to take a look at the solicitation, uh, you know, you're certainly welcome in the category attachments, you're certainly welcome to do so. And we wanted to call your attention to that. Now here is a screenshot of the GSA eBuy site. This is a really important site for using MAS. Again, because of the, just the breadth of offerings available under MAS, it can be really overwhelming. Um, so eBuy is a one-stop shop for you to do um, some market research about the offerings available under MAS. It also includes offerings under other vehicles like GSA's um, GWAX or the uh, MAX, like the OASIS uh, contract. Those are all also loaded into eBuy. But for the purposes of MAS, um, some of the features that you want to know about here are, first of all, the search bar. So if you're new to using MAS and you want to um, look up whether there's a certain product or service available under MAS, you could just use the search bar to type that in. The search bar allows you to use keywords, 
to search by a contractor name, or if you know a contract number, you could search by that. It also allows you to search by NAICS codes or SINs. So um, it's a pretty flexible search bar. That's probably the first thing you would use if you have something specific in mind that you're looking for. If you're just curious and you want to poke around here, this category guide in the middle of the screen actually has all of those 12 categories we have under MAS. And if you click on one of those arrows next to each of these category areas, it will take you to another web page that will show all of the subcategories. And then when you click on a subcategory, it will show you all of the SINs available under the subcategory. So that is a way to navigate as well. Um, finally, on eBuy, there are lots of resources available to you just to, to click on and it will take you to other sites. So um, for example, if you've never used MAS before and you want to talk to somebody at GSA about how do I do this, um, we've got customer service directors that would be happy to talk to you. And so there is a link to uh, called connect with your customer service director and you can click on that they're geographically based so um, you can uh, click on that and reach out to somebody and they would be more than happy to talk to you about what you're trying to procure and ways that you can do that there's also links to training opportunities and then some of the major sites we use you know in the course of federal contracting like fpds and g um, under, uh, we've got that the GSA, the Acquisition Gateway, which is a fabulous resource for contracting professionals. Um, and we've got links to um, other sites as well. So um, a great tool for you. If you don't have this um, bookmarked, um, go ahead and um, on, the, on those, I think it was two slides before I had a link to eBuy. Um, you could also just Google it GSA eBuy and that will come up in your Google search. So definitely recommend you use this, especially if you are new to MAS and you want to do some research. So I'm going to pivot from that to talking about these new SINs that we recently added to the professional services category. So on this slide, the title of it is Overview of MAS Refresh Number 7. Um, Again, that was an amendment that we did. We actually had Refresh 7 over a year ago. It was in the summer of 2021. And that was an amendment where we added or made changes to um, various SINs under MAS. Um, the, the, the SINs that are in like pale blue are changes that were happening also in Refresh 7. But because we're focusing on the professional services category today, I, I put in bold, you know, these are the, the changes that happened in Refresh 7 to add new SINs. So we added two new SINs. We added SIN 524292INS, which is third party administration of insurance and pension funds. And then we added SIN 541990, which is is all other professional scientific and technical services, non-IT. Um, we also had an existing SIN, 562112, which is for hazardous waste disposal. Um, we revised that SIN to expand the offerings under that SIN. So uh, this is just a snapshot of what happened in Refresh 7. Currently, we are under refresh 14, so that kind of gives you an idea. We've had a lot of amendments to our solicitation over the past couple of years. I think the pace of the amendments will start slowing down, uh, but yeah, we've had seven refreshes since uh, this happened in, in August of 2021, where we added these sentences. So here is the change for SIN 562112, our hazardous waste disposal services. What we changed was we expanded the scope to allow disposal of medical and pharmaceutical waste, also including disposal of low level radiological waste associated with medical waste. Um, by expanding these services, any vendors that were interested in pursuing this SIN were given additional requirements that they had to submit to us before they could be determined eligible for award. And so we required them to provide copies of their most recent audits, um, any copies of any federal, state, and local certifications they held, and then a description of their contract compliance and training and certification programs specifically related to waste disposal services. We also developed an ordering guide for this SIN for our customers, that would be you. And if you click on this hyperlink, it will take you to the ordering guide. 
We also are in the process of developing acquisition planning packages for the environmental services subcategory, which will include not only the SIN 562112, it will also include um, services for environmental consulting and for environmental remediation services. Here is an actual description of the SIN. Um, as you can see, it's pretty lengthy. It's a pretty detailed description of the types of services uh, that are available under this SIN. And this box on the right side of the screen basically shows some, some facts about the SIN. Um, it shows which large category the SIN falls under, which is professional services. Um, this SIN falls under the environmental services subcategory. And then this is our SIN number and the associated NAICS with that SIN number. Um, we also show whether the SIN is uh, eligible for cooperative purchasing. Cooperative purchasing is a program by which state and local governments can order off mass for any reason. Uh, currently, cooperative purchasing is limited strictly to IT and uh, security services um, under MAS. So most of our, uh, it, nothing under the professional services category is subject to cooperative purchasing at this time. We actually needed congressional approval to open uh, the IT and the security to state and local for any routine use. Um, having said that, uh, we do allow state and local governments to order off MAS for um, em disaster response or emergency, you know, planning for disasters. Um, if the SIN is set aside, uh, it would show here as a yes, um, this SIN is not set aside. Uh, that does not mean that you cannot um, at the order level uh, do a set aside. You certainly can. It's just that this particular SIN and the, the vast majority of our SINs under MAS are open to both small and other than small businesses. Um, any small business SIN we have under MAS actually has the four letters at the end, SBSA, which stands for small business set aside. Um, but none of the SINs we're talking about today have small business set aside status. Um, this shows our FSC or code, our PSC code. Um, the minimum, the, the maximum order is showing as a million dollars. I do want to emphasize here, um, maximum order does not mean you cannot order more than a million dollars. It is simply a term that we use in MAS um, to, to, for vendors to, to decide whether they, they want to accept an order over that maximum order threshold. They do not have to if they don't want to. Um, it also, there are some triggering events as a contractor that they have to follow for disclosing price reductions. Um, in other words, they're giving a, a commercial customer a better price than we are. They have to notify us of that um, under anything under the maximum order threshold. Over the maximum order threshold, they don't have to disclose it. Just so you know, I hate that term. It's really confusing. It has no bearing whatsoever on the dollar value of an order you can place under MAS, and that's what I really want you to know. Um, under the maximum order, we've got the size standard. Currently, it's $41.5 million. That is, that is what delineates a small business from an other than small business for this particular NAICS. Um, TDR stands for Transactional Data Reporting. I uh, won't go into that today. It is a program that particularly for our vendors that um, allows them to uh, report their sales in a different way. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, state and local cooperative purchasing, um, it, we are not allowed um, for that, but we do allow for emergency procurements or disaster recovery. So for this SIN 562112 hazardous waste disposal, here's a little bit of additional background information about what is considered low level waste. Um, so this screen, I won't read all the words on the screen, but this is a description from the um, NRC as far as what they categorize as low level waste and how that needs to be handled and stored. So if you're interested, here's an additional resource for you to do some research. Another new SIN, so one of the new SINs we added in Refresh 7 back in uh, 
August 2021, was this new SIN 524292, Third Party Administration of Insurance and Pension Funds. So what this SIN does is it's for financial services relating to insurance or pension funds. And it's really a one-stop shop SIN for all things related to um, these funds. And typically we're thinking like uh, Medicare, Medicaid, those types of programs. So what this SIN allows for is for vendors to provide um, medical coding, medical billing, medical claims and appeal services, insurance claim processing, managing and distributing claims reimbursements. It also includes ancillary services such as customer service and outreach, program management, um, compliance or dispute resolution support, um, data reporting support, and so forth. So um, anything related to the management of an insurance or pension fund, this, this then was designed to cover that type of service. And again, similar as uh, the other SIN, these are the specific, the specifics about um, the terms and conditions for the SIN. These also show up in the category attachment with the SIN, just so you know. That's where actually where we got this information from. And then finally, we added another SIN, 541990, all other professional scientific and technical services other than IT. Um, so one of the things we do with MAS is we align our SIN numbers with NAICS codes because we know our customers are used to using NAICS codes when you're making procurement. So we try to make it a little easier for you and, and link NAICS codes explicitly to our different SINs. Under our legacy schedules, we did not do that. So it could be really confusing for a customer to figure out which NAICS were available under which SINs. Under MAS, it's pretty obvious. So the NAICS associated with this SIN is 541990. Um, we know that this SIN is a very popular SIN to use um, uh, for acquisition of professional services. And um, a lot of times agencies use it when they have a complex or a really unusual um, requirement and they are just not sure what the best fit makes to use, a lot of times they'll default to this uh, 541990. Under MAS, we have to make sure that our SINs are kind of unique and that we're not um, having unnecessary duplication of, or overlap. So for the purposes of MAS, we've defined this SIN to include, basically what it is, it's any professional, scientific, or technical service that isn't under another existing MAS SIN right now. And because we have 300 SINs, and many of those are services type SINs, um, it can be difficult to find a service offering that's not covered under an existing SIN. So we provided some examples of services that currently are not available under any other mass SIN that you could legitimately use the SIN for. Um, so, and there are a very, it's a very kind of wide and disparate set of examples, um, but includes appraisal services, not real estate, um, crisis management, emergency preparedness, emergency management, uh, commodity inspection services, mathematical and statistical professional services, um, and then like uh, public health planning services, weather forecasting, and so forth. So um, this SIN is um, a little bit unlike what you might do with the professional services in the open market in that we have a very specific um, kind of set of parameters around it. And what I would say, if you are used to using SIN 541990 or NAICS 541990, uh, you might be better off instead of on the e-library search, instead of looking for that NAICS, you might want to do a keyword search for the type of service you're looking for, because it might take you to the best fit SIN, which may not be this one. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that we do have some SINs under MAS that share the same NAICS code. And 541990 is one of these NAICS codes that appears under multiple different SINs under MAS. So if you went into that available offerings attachment and search for NAICS 541990, I believe there's at least three different SINs currently awarded under MAS that all share the same NAICS, but they have a different purpose and a different scope and description. So it's better probably 
for this particular next code to do your keyword search. Um, you will get some useful information. If you do a next search, it will show those multiple sins that are worded. Um, but uh, because this one is a little different than how you are probably used to using it, um, we just want to let you know that there's constraints around how this sin will be used. So we just made these sins available uh, to be awarded and used in the summer of 2021. So since then, we have awarded under SIN 524292INS, we've awarded nine contracts. Small businesses have seven of them and other than small have two of them, two of the nine contracts. And then under SIN 541990, we have awarded 30 contracts um, of which 24 are small businesses and six are other than small. Now, SIN 562112 was already an existing SIN. We did not add the SIN, we just expanded it. Um, so we have 67 vendors currently awarded under that SIN of which 51 are small and 16 are other than small. One of the things that I think is really great, and it's one of the values, uh, great reasons to use Maz, is that we have a, a huge pool of small businesses participating in Maz. Um, about 80% of the overall contractors that have a Maz contract are small businesses. So you have a really good opportunity to do business with small businesses um, if you use Maz. And under Maz, you are allowed to set aside your requirements for small businesses if you choose to. So uh, it's a great way to meet your small business goals. I know we're always thinking about that. Every agency has goals that you have to meet every year, or at least try to meet, um, to to send your you know procurements to small business. So has is a great way to do that. Uh, so one of the things you can see on this slide, if you didn't notice already, uh, so in FY22, we had over $9 million in sales under the SIN 562112. We have not had any reported sales under these two new SINs. So we have vendors out there that are waiting and eager to uh, be able to compete for work. So um, it, just let you know, uh, we, we haven't had any reported sales as of yet. We do expect to start seeing those coming in this year. It usually takes about a year or two before the awareness of the SIN, you know, kind of uh, spreads. Uh, and that's part of why we're doing this webinar today is just to make people aware that these SINs exist and they're available to use. Um, under MAS, you do want to try to get maximum practicable uh, competition. Um, we, we would like for you to get at least three quotes. So the fact that we have um, at least nine vendors on this 542 524292INS means you're probably going to get multiple quotes. Um, and then the other SINs already have quite a bit more than that. I know some people worry about using MAS because there are some SINs that have many, many contractors awarded. But uh, we've done study after study after study and find that actually the number of quotes you get for any particular order is not that huge. So just because it shows there's 67 mass vendors that hold this in does not mean if you put an RFQ out for hazardous waste disposal, you're going to get 67 quotes. More likely than not, you're going to get less than 10 quotes. Um, plenty to evaluate, plenty of competition, um, but a lot of, you know, depending on what your requirements are, some of these vendors just can't meet the requirements. So um, don't, don't equate the number of contractors holding us in with the number of quotes you might get. I just want you to know that. Um, as far as ordering, so we have a couple of, if you've never ordered off of MAS, there's a couple of really good resources for you. The one on the right is a screenshot from our multiple word schedule ordering guide. This is a, a guide for, you know, beginning to end. This is what the schedule is. This is what sends, this is how you buy things. Um, these are some tips for um, what you need to include in your RFQ and so forth. So this is a really good reference guide if you're new to using MAS. Um, this guide on the left side is an ordering guide we developed um, for that SIN 562-112 hazardous waste disposal. So um, the, the links to each guide are underneath. Uh, you can click on the hyperlink. It'll take you to the site where these live. Um, this ordering guide please goes to the um, uh, publication site 
and they may ask you to put in a little bit of information, your, your email address and so forth, um, just so they can track who's wanting to download the document. Um, but once you put that information in, it, you will be able to immediately download it and access it. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. Uh, additional resources we have for buyers. Um, we have developed uh, acquisition planning packages under the professional services category for our customers to use. And they have lots of samples, they have templates, there are ordering guides, as I said, they have sample statements of work or professional work statement or, uh, you know, you know, statements of work, of sample I individual or sorry, independent government cost estimate. Um, you can use those samples if you like. We also have samples, RFI request for information templates. Um, we have a service called Market Research as a service that you can take if it's totally free. You can take advantage of that if you want to do some market research and get feedback directly from vendors about your offerings that you're planning to acquire. Uh, it's a popular tool and it helps you do your market research to see what is the availability of staff out there for your specific requirements. Vendors can respond to your actual requirements, tell you if they have the capabilities. They may be able to send you a capability statement. Um, so really good information to help you do your market research. And then if you are ready to start your development of uh, your requirements um, using MAS, we even have samples um, service evaluation factors for a task order. So these are all parts of the acquisition planning package. We develop these for you, our customers, to make it easier for you to, to buy off mass. So um, if you click on the hyperlink, it'll take you to the site that has these resources for you. Even more resources for you. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, we have a YouTube channel um, and we are constantly doing presentations that get posted on the YouTube channel. Um, currently, we have over 70 recordings under the professional services and human capital category channel alone. And there's even more under other categories of, of GSA. For example, the information technology category has its own channel and it's got many offerings as well. So. Uh, great on demand, watch the YouTube videos, you can learn a ton. Um, this is one of the ways that I learn about what's going on in other parts of MAS when I have some time to do some, um, you know, online training. Uh, we also have this site, buy.gsa.gov, and this is a cool new site that was just stood up um, earlier this year, and the idea that GSA has here is we want to make it just a one-stop website for you to do everything. So uh, earlier in this presentation, I showed you the GSA e-library site. Right now, that's a standalone site, but later it's going to be merged into the spy.gov site. Um, so um, you will only have to remember buy.gsa.gov buy and you will find all of the resources you need. Um, right now, some of the resources that reside under buy.gsa.gov are um, the GSA Interact um, tool. And this is uh, basically our blog. This is a GSA blog. And there are all kinds of groups under Interact where GSA communicates out with our customers. Sorry about that. Um... So I think the point we got to was we wanted to offer some um, uh, links to different resources that GSA has made available uh, to help support your procurement uh, needs. Uh, Chris talked about the YouTube channel, uh, buy.gsa.gov. Um, and then we have a, a team of people called customer service directors who are um, ready, willing, and able to be your uh, point of contact for all things GSA based on what agency you're in and what part of the country you are in. Um, before we go to next steps, I wanted to take one slide step backwards to slide number 18 uh, and just um, reemphasize uh, how good some of these uh, resources are, specifically the acquisition planning packages. Um, another resource that I wanted to highlight as you go through your discovery and requirements definition work uh, for example, if you're an agency ordering official working with a program office on, let's say, a hazardous waste disposal services requirement, uh, like the one Chris Ann described, uh, where we modified the scope of that SIN, uh, another really good resource uh, for you 
and, and working with your program office uh, 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 partners is to go to another GSA system called eBuy Open, uh, which is different from GSA eBuy. Uh, one of the things that you'll be able to do is if um, a customer program office comes to you and says, I need to acquire, the, acquire these hazardous waste disposal services, but I don't really have uh, a really solid statement of work or performance work statement. Um, you can look at the acquisition planning package documents that GSA has posted, but you can also um, uh, go out to GSA eBuy Open, search by that NAICS code 562112 for hazardous waste disposal services, and you'll see a list of similar requirements using that NAICS code uh, posted on eBuy Open. You can sort by date, by agency, you can look up other NAICS codes. Uh, and what it'll show you is a couple of really valuable discovery and requirements definition um, pieces of information. Specifically, uh, you'll see the agency ordering official and their contact information. And you'll also see any and all um, documents that have been uploaded in support of that RFI uh, or RFP or sources sought notice. So if you're starting with a blank sheet of paper for a statement of work, Go out and look and see what other agencies are buying those kinds of services. Go to GSA eBuy Open, search for that NAICS code, look for those requirements that may be similar to yours, and you'll be able to get access to the uh, those documents for, for review and use in your discovery, requirements definition, and market research and planning. Um, that's all I wanted to say about that. Let me take a, a quick look at the um, the questions and answers before we go. Uh, I have about 47 past the hour. Um, one open question Diane asks uh, about the environmental uh, services uh, subcategory. Uh, she, she asks, is SIN 541620, which is environmental consulting services, a subcategory of SIN 562112 or is it standalone? The answer is standalone. I think within uh, mass professional services, the environmental um, subcategory, there are three sins. These are two of the three sins. Uh, hope that answers your question, Diane. Uh, looks like two other questions were answered. Um, so I don't see anything else there. Um, so uh, last slide for today, uh, pending any additional questions. Um, we've got a couple of uh, upcoming uh, events, webinars similar to this one, uh, which we refer to as office hours. Um, in January, there's gonna be a webinar on evaluation factors um, coming up in um, February. Those of you who use GSA's OASIS contract uh, for your procurement requirements, uh, have the opportunity to do a webinar with us on um, a tool called Symphony that can be used uh, to manage your OASIS task order uh, requirements from um, uh, the initial release of an RFI, RFP, and source of sought notice all the way through to um, contract award. Uh, in March, uh, there'll be another webinar. This one is focused on um, uh, requirements. Um, what's the best fit for your agency and your specific requirement? Is it a statement of work? Is it a statement of objectives? Or is it a performance work statement? And then finally, uh, in April, um, you've probably all heard uh, GSA has been working very um, feverishly, feverishly and very closely with our partners in industry and our customer agencies on the, um, the follow-on contract to OASIS, which we have smartly named OASIS Plus. Uh, so we'll give you an update in, uh, in April about where that uh, procurement stands. Uh, let me take one last look at the, um, the Q&A. Um, I see a couple of uh, questions, let's see. Um, let me take on uh, the first one of the four uh, anonymous attendee asks, uh, hey, where can we get a copy of today's slides? I think um, my colleagues uh, have posted a link to the PDF file in the chat uh, for today's 
um, webinar. So if you go into the chat and look for that, you should be able to find it. Um, Garrett asks, are there any service disabled veteran owned small business vendors, SDVO, SBs, under the new SIN for waste disposal? Uh, two part answer, it's actually not a new SIN, 562-112. We just uh, expanded the scope of the existing SIN. And if you go into GSA eLibrary and simply type in that SIN, 562-112, uh, you'll be able to drill down click on the SIN number and it'll give you a list uh, of all of the vendors who have that SIN on their contract. And you'll be able to do a sort by uh, socio socioeconomic factor to identify um, uh, those particular um, types of vendors. Um, let me see another question here, um, Raj asks, what is the SIN for firing ranges? Uh, similar to um, the answer to the previous question, if you go to um, GSA eLibrary, you can just Google that, uh, log in, and in the search field, type in firing ranges, and uh, GSA eLibrary will report back to you the results of that search, and you can find um, what um, SIN uh, on the multiple award schedule, firing ranges uh, can be found in the scope. And Hi, I Raj. Uh, yeah, I was just going to chime in here. I actually was searching for the answer for you, and nothing came up in the search, and sometimes that happens. I'm pretty sure if those services are covered anywhere under MAS, it would be under our security and protection category. Um, so we can reach out to them, but um, you can also, if you do not see a, uh, which you wouldn't, if you look for it, you're not gonna find anything. Um, we have a customer service center that you can reach out to, and I'm going to put that information in the chat box, um, but it's at the top of, um, if you were to go into eLibrary, uh, we have the, the email address and the phone number for that, they may be able to, if they can answer it, they can reach out to the category owners. Um, in this case, they would be reaching out to the security protection category folks and asking, you know, hey, where can a customer acquire, you know, firing range uh, type services or whatever you actually need to buy, they can hunt that down for you and get you an answer. So just wanted to let you know about that as well. I don't think I mentioned in the presentation. There are a couple of other uh, questions posted in here um, regarding order limitations. Um, Chris, did you want to take that one on or uh, respond with a written answer? Um, yeah, I was looking at that one as well. Um, so we do have that, we have that maximum order limit in MAS, but again, it is an artificial limit. It's not meant to limit the val dollar value of an order that can be placed. So I would assume in most cases it would say um, zero. So that, and I believe that would be the, the appropriate because there's no dollar value limit on a, an order that you could place under MAS. Okay. Um, we've got just a couple more minutes um, before we get to the top of the hour. Um, let's see if there are any others in here. Um, Chris, there, were there, given the, the time left, were there any other questions in here that, um, that we can take a, a look at and answer live? Uh, otherwise, what we'll do is um, uh, take them down, develop the response, and get them out to you. Regarding the firing range question, I wasn't sure what the purpose of the question was. If it's cleaning of the, and I think somebody else chimed in, if it's cleaning of the firing range, I would recommend that you um, work with our MRAS team and issue a request for information out to contractors holding this in to see if there are vendors that provide provide that type of service. So um, off the top of my head, I do not know of any firms that do that. It may be that there are, and it's just uh, it's kind of a niche service. So that is where that MRAS tool is super valuable because it helps you hone in on who can actually perform that type of service for you. So um, uh, that would be my recommendation is to you to go ahead and uh, put out an RFI under that SIN and, and see which vendors can respond to that kind of requirement. 
Okay. Okay. And I see Raj is saying it's for firearms training used by TSA. So yeah, then I would say in that case, if that's what you need, I would go back to the National Customer Services Center. And they, um, that is that is a service that would probably fall under our security and protection category. That's my understanding. It does not fall under the professional services category. I can tell you that. Um, so Raj, I would say go ahead and, and contact our National Customer Service Center and they can reach out and um, and find which is the best fit services that do that. Okay. Um, and I see Angela has a question. We have wanted to explore the cleanup of dispersed shooting. So I would put an RFI under which sin. I think we're, uh, you would look, what I would do is I would put it under um, the hazardous waste disposal and possibly remediation, although I'm just not sure myself. Again, I do not have any direct knowledge of this specific type of service, uh, but an RFI can help you find vendors that can do that. Um, we can also, um, Diane and Angela, um, we can reach back out to our security and protection category and see if they've got, uh, they've got a SIN that they use for that type of service since it's related to training of law enforcement type or security personnel, that might be a better fit there. So I will do some research. I'm sorry, off the top of my head, I do not know the answer, but we will get you one. Uh, Carla, John, uh, Chris, I think that wraps things up for today. I have um, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, thank you both so much. Thank you, Christian. That was informative indeed. And thank you so much, Bill, for jumping in there. Uh, we definitely didn't anticipate that Zoom crash and we uh, apologize for that. But we thank you all for spending part of your day with us today. Um, and we wish you a wonderful rest of the week. We will compile some of the questions here that we weren't able to address and then we will disseminate those. Uh, we'll also share the slide deck with you via email and regarding CLPs, no worries there. We are able to track all that have attended and we will um, make sure that you get a certificate in, in via email as well. So thanks again and have a wonderful rest of the day.